Hello fellow Whovians and welcome on in to episode 3 of the Holy Whovian History Podcast. I'm your host Arachnerd and today I'm going to be talking you through the production history of the Patrick Troughton era of Doctor Who. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So. Lloyd and story editor Jerry Davis came up with an intriguing way of writing out William Hartnell's first Doctor. So, as he was an alien being, they decided that he would have the power to change his body when it became worn out or seriously injured, a process that was then called renewal but would later become known within the mythology of the series as regeneration. This is the moment I mentioned in episode 1, where we now have a sort of really iconic part of Doctor Who that came about through convenience. There's only one man in England who can take over, and that is Patrick Troughton, is what William Hartnell reportedly said with regards to his successor as the Doctor. Lloyd and Davis cast actor actor Troughton, who first appeared in November 1966, after the changeover from Hartnell had been seen at the end of the story, The Tenth Planet. And that serial also introduced the popular Cybermen, villains who will return to face the Doctor on several subsequent occasions. Now, um, Patrick Troughton, a little bit of backstory for him. Um, you know, at the time he'd been in a few things as a character actor, most famously I think portraying Robin Hood, which was later referenced in the series, and he was quite, you know, an eccentric and bouncy character. Uh, The second Doctor's era consisted of 21 stories and 119 episodes. Now, unfortunately, 53 episodes are currently lost, having been deleted from the BBC archives, with no copies having yet been found elsewhere. Uh, They can only be watched as reconstructions, with audio and stills, some have tellies and apps or whatever. Only seven of the second Doctor stories can be watched as actual moving episodes in their entirety. These stories are The Tomb of the Cybermen, The Enemy of the World, The Dominators, The Mind Robber, The Crotons, The Seeds of Death, and The War Games. Two I'm picking out there that are really great, Tomb of the Cybermen and Any of the Enemy of the World, really, if you haven't seen them, take a look at them, War Games as well. Now, 46 years old, when he started in the role, Patrick Troughton was not known as an experienced char- was known as an experienced character actor. He didn't want to simply copy Hartnell's Doctor, he wanted his interpretation of the character to be a more casual, eccentric. Um, his interpretation was described as a cosmic hobo. He's more disheveled looking than Hartnell. Hartnell. Troughton played the role generally in a more lightweight and comical manner, albeit still with much of the original character's passionate hatred of evil and desire to help the oppressed. He also, on occasion, showed a darker side, manipulating his companions and the people around him for the greater good. Examples of this being seen include the Tomb of the Cybermen and the Evil of the Daleks. Davis left the show at the end of the fourth season and was replaced by Peter Bryant. A few months later, Lloyd left the show and Bryant was promoted to producer. Brian's successor as script editor was Derek Sherwin, through, though Victor Pemberton had filled the job for Brian's first serial, The Tomb of the Cybermen. Troughton remained in the part for three seasons until 1969, eventually tiring of the workload of starring regular series. Now, by this time, the viewing figures for Doctor Who had fallen considerably, and the new script editor, Terence Dix, you might know that name from novelizations and really iconic stories later on, recall that there was some talk of ending the series after its sixth season in 1969, though this has been denied by Brian Sherwin and director David Maloney, with paperwork suggesting that it was actually in danger at the end of the seventh season in 1970. The series' budget was also ex- increasingly strained by the cost of exotic sets, costumes and props every time the Doctor visited a new setting, and so Brian and Sherwin, now effectively act- acting as co-producer, though the BBC refused to credit him as such, came up with the idea of reducing the cost of the series by setting all of the adventures on Earth, with the Doctor to act as a scientific advisor to an organisation called UNIT. The United Nations Intelligence Task Force, charged with defending the Earth from alien invasion. 
Now this new setup was tested in the Series 6 story The Invasion, and at the end of the season was put in place more permanently by having the second Doctor captured by his own race the Time Lords in the story The War Games, and sentenced to his exile on Earth with his appearance being changed again as punishment for his interference in the affairs of other races. Tired out from the demanding filming schedule and wanting to avoid being typecast, Patrick Troughton elected to leave Doctor Who after three years in the lead role. He made his final regular appearance on 21st of June 1969 in the final episode of The War Games, in which the Time Lords forced the Tekken Doctor to regenerate and exile him to Earth for breaking their non-interference laws. Thus, Doctor Who ended its sixth production block and its black and white era. From then on, in common with other popular British television programmes, it was produced in colour. Trapman ended end up returning to the show and reprising the role of the th second Doctor three times. These were in The Three Doctors in 1973, The Five Doctors in 1983, and The Two Doctors in 1985. Now, on the 28th of March 1987, whilst attending a science fiction convention in Columbus, Georgia, Troughton tragically died of a heart attack in his hotel room, aged 67. And that is it. That is the story of the second Doctor era of Doctor Who. There we go. I feel like that was a rather quick one. Was that a quicker one than usual? Yeah, it has been. Mm. So, again... In later episodes, I will be going through this era and I will be picking up my favourite stories, my least favourite stories. Um, so that should be fun. Um, so there we go. Um, thank you all for listening to this, if you are still listening. Um, and I hope that you will tune in next time when on the Holy Whovian History Podcast, we will be looking at the John Pertwee era of Doctor Who. I've been your host, Arachnerd. This has been the Holy Whovian History Podcast. I will see you all next time. Have a great day. Allons-y!